so I'm going to talk about a relative age geologic map that I've been working on with Dr. Christensen's help and some geomorphic analyses that I've been able to make um, about Syria Mons, which is a volcano on Syria planet. So looking at geomorphology can tell us a lot of insights about the eruptive history of a volcano, the tectonic history, which is possibly a pretty good example of what Syria Mons would be like. Mauna Kea is fed by a mantle plume, um, and it has undergone uh, differentiation or um, composition change over time. You can see that the slope increases towards the summit um, as the magma changed from flood basalt, the basaltic shield, towards uh, more of a cinder cone eruption. So here is a map of Mars. You can see this large region over here, lots of red and brown. This is the Tharsis bulge, um, of which Syria Mons is a part. Here is Syria Planum right here. Uh, over to the west, to the east of that is Valles Marineris, um, as well as you can see the large Tharsis Mountains and Olympus Mons up to the northwest. So there are a lot of different um, ideas about uh, this whole Tharsis region. Um, one of the main ideas about the uh, active volcanism in Syria Planum is uh, a basaltic or a mantle plume, um, which has caused all of this volcanic activity. So here's a detailed picture. This is from uh, the Themis Day Infrared. Um, image from NASA, Access Through JMARS, which is a program provided by Arizona State University. So you can see, um, this is a close-up of Syria Planum. You can see to the north are the uh, westernmost canyons of Valles Marineris, and Syria Mons is this darkish peak right there. And you can see the flood, or the lava flows extending out from it to the south. Um, as I've said, this is uh, theorized that it's come from a very long-lived mantle plume. Um, if we go to this next slide. This is a figure modified from uh, Richardson et al. In 2013, they mapped this entire region. Um, the red box that you see on the figure is the area of my map that I've been working on. The larger black rectangle that's part of the original figure um, shows most of the extent of Syria, of uh, the flows out of Syria Mons. You can see the star is the summit of Syria Mons, and that white outline around it is the extent of all of the flows. In the other regions, you can see the black dots. Those are other shield volcanoes that were measured and mapped. And so this area, they used crater counts and other things to figure out uh, the ages of the different regions. And so they uh, discovered that this uh, whole Syria Planum was active volcanically for about 900 million years. Um, if we compare that to the Hawaii Emperor uh, volcanic chain, the oldest uh, seamount that we see there at the top of the Emperor chain is 81 million years old. So this is much longer lived um, and we can see that Syria Mons, as they discovered, was active from about 3.41 to 3.47 billion years ago, which is, um, for that, those were the, the constraints on the age that they could find. Um, that's during the early Hesperian age of Martian history. So to make this map, I had to collect a lot of images. Um, the first tool I used was JMARS, like I mentioned, was provided by ASU. So you can see over on the right there, that is a, a CTX image or a context image. Those are from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. They're taken as supplement images for the high rise, which is very, very high resolution images. So these are kind of to, to provide context, basically, for those higher resolution images. Um, but they're at a great resolution for this scale of mapping. 
Um, also, I have uh, created some digital elevation mod uh, digital elevation models. Um, I've got this larger one on the left figure is from the University of Washington. They uh, have taken the MOLA DEMs and reprocessed them for greater accuracy. Within that, you can see a smaller rectangle with um, var greater variation in color. That is a DEM from Mars SI, which is a program created by the University of Lyon in France. But what they do is they take these CTX images and they find stereo pairs that overlap and they process them to create a digital elevation model. So they can look at different incidence angles of the light from the picture and use that to calculate the elevations. And so the goal of these, of using these digital elevation models is to create profiles along these lava flows and across the lava flows to be able to analyze how thick they are, if that thickness changes over time or over distance. And that will give us insight into the history and the comp potential compositional changes or other changes over time of the volcano. Um, so one of the problems that I ran into with the context images is that they were, until December 2016, they were provided from NASA, um, not as, they were provided just as .jpg files, and those don't include any kind of georeferencing information. So they, they provided those with a header file that had that information contained, but ArcMap wasn't able to process those together. So I found a Python script that was written by Trent Hare from the USGS that takes those two files and combines them together into a JP2, which contains that information. And so that file, the JP2, I was able to drag directly into ArcMap and process it. Um, so for all of this, for uh, running that Python script and for using Mars SI, I've created detailed documentation about all the steps that I've taken, and um, I've zipped that into a folder with instructions, um, a README from Trent Hare for that program, and a text file containing that Python script, and those will all be available on Dr. Christensen's website for anyone who wants to, uh, to use the same method. So in ArcMap, um, I used a few uh, different methods to create this map. Looking at superposition of flows, I, um, as you can see on this right figure, uh, the flow in the northwest corner is overlaying another flow, which is overlaying um, what looks like another flow underneath it. Um, so you can tell that, that there are multiple flows here. You can see the scarp uh, delineating the boundary between them. And so I just traced those, created a shape file, and I'll show you more details of that. I also uh, plotted the flow terminations, as you can see here and here. Here's a flow that ends, plotted at that point, and I used those points to create a histogram of lengths of flows. Um, I also created elevation profiles that I'll, I'll show you. So here's a map of, this is just the flow boundaries that I was able to map. As you can see, I'm still process of finishing that, uh, but these are most of these are most of the ones that, that are easily visible. Um, there's also some regional tectonic structures that I found in creating this map. As you can see, the purple lines that come across, those are narrow grobbins that are kind of concentric wrapping around the summit of Syrian Mons, which you can see marked in a black dot at the north of the figure. Um, there's also, to the southwest, a topographic rise, which um, kind of doesn't make sense at first, knowing that the summit of Syria Mons is to the north and the lava flows have flowed to the south. The lava can't flow uphill, so something must be happening there. Either um, there's been a post-volcanic uplift of that region, or potentially since of the sheer volume of magma that has been flowing out of Syria Mons could have caused a magma withdrawal and the summit could have collapsed to explain that. So we're going to look at some profiles to think about those different possibilities. 
here are three profiles that I was able to create. The top two are from uh, the MOLA data that we have. The first one extends from the summit of Syria Mons away to the southwest. And you can see that except for a very slight incline in the middle, it's generally straight downhill. The second one is a MOLA profile from the summit to the southwest. Um, I'm sorry, the first one's to the southeast. This one's to the southwest, and you can see it passes through that uplift. This bottom one is also is a profile along uh, this DEM. You can see it drawn right here. That passes through uh, that rise. And so if you, if you look, they the second and third one correlate pretty well, that rise. Um, and so, but since it's local just to that area, we can assume that it's probably a tectonic, uh, tectonic feature other than, rather than a magma withdrawal. Because if you look at the top profile, it is still generally downhill from the summit to the distal regions of the flows. Um, I also made some profiles on the flow scale. You can see there are some limitations with these. They're very noisy and spiky. Uh, but hopefully the idea is to analyze more of these and come up with um, changes along the flows and between different flows to be able to see um, how, the, how the volcano has changed over time. And so you can see this uh, top one corresponds to the red profile in the northeast corner. This middle box to the purple one on this west side and the blue onto the blue one. Um, and so this spike right here is the edge of the flow, and then this spike right here is the other edge of that flow. I also plotted this histogram of the flow terminations. <clears throat> so you can see um, these are the bins right here of lengths of flow from the summit to the termination. 38 uh, kilometers to 48 kilometers, there are five flows that fall within that one. Um, so you can see that there are three clusters of flow lengths. Um, we have a very near cluster between 0 and 80 kilometers in length, a middle region between 150 and 250 kilometers in length, and then a far region where flows are longer, greater than 300 kilometers. And I measured 86 of these flows. Only seven of them were flows that were overlain by a younger and longer flow. So um, more than 90% of these, the youngest ones are the longest ones. So in conclusion, um, we can see that there have been three stages of eruptions. The oldest eruptions were the longest. The flows extended up to 450 kilometers. Uh, the intermediate flows from about 150 to 250 kilometers, and then the youngest flows just cap the top and only extend up to 80 kilometers away. So this could be explained by a change in rate of eruption or a change in composition of the magma. And hopefully looking at these profiles and doing a little more analysis of them will be able to give us evidence towards that. Um, it could also be an indication that this indeed was fed by a mantle bloom if, if we find that this change in length has been caused by a change in rate of eruption. As the mantle plume reaches the surface, it would erupt a lot at first and then trail off. Um, also, the post-volcanic post uh, rise to the south or the dropping of the summit um, is most probably a tectonic activity causing an active decline in the southwest rather than a withdrawal of magma. So continuing research, I need to uh, finish analyzing these flow profiles and use that information to infer, infer the viscosity or the velocity of the flows and use that to look at eruption rates and changes over time and determine the likely causes of the flow short. Thank you. We have time for one question while um, Brandon's getting